It's noon already. Friday at that. A Friday nooner. Uh, this is kind of a video where I want to talk about an action figure that's not Star Wars related and just a figure, not the line. And this was, I'm sorry about my squeaky chair. This is uh, Iceman from the X-Men line released in 1992 and it holds a lot of memories for me. And I, I was going to have it here and prop it up next to me and show you guys, but I'll show pictures because I know I put it in a box when I moved about a year ago. I know it's in my closet. I know it's boxed up and I couldn't find it. I dug, dug through like 10 boxes. Couldn't find it. Ain't that, ain't that how it goes? When you want something, you can't ever find it. But why does this figure hold so much memory? You know, you can take one of my vintage Star Wars figures, like a Han Hoth, and I can look at it, and it just floods my memory bank. Well, you know, playing at my grandmother's house on her carpet, uh, at her house, laying on the floor, playing with my Star Wars men, or me and my brother playing Star Wars. When I see Obi-Wan Kenobi, I can remember it ends there, my brother buying it. Um... Speeder bike. I can remember going to Toys R Us with my dad to buy the speeder bike when I was really out of Star Wars by then, but Toys R Us was new in town. They didn't really go there much, so I was like, hey, if I'm there, I'm buying something. I remember walking into uh, KB Toys, seeing Power of the Force figures, but this X-Men came out at a time when I was starting to get back into action figures. I was, uh, you know, it was a time of period of your life when you're out of, when you're done with school, um, and it's before you enter the work, I didn't go to college, of course, so it's before I entered the work field, uh, well, maybe some part-time work, but I was still living at home, so, you know, I had this money to burn more than I do any other time in my life, probably, uh, you know, bills, I think I had a car payment, maybe some air insurance or something, but, you know, you didn't have kids and mortgages and all the stuff that you have as an adult or a lot of the stuff you have as an adult. Uh, so I started getting into these figures again. I started buying the Batman animated series. That's probably the one that really pulled me in the new stuff. I was getting into the vintage stuff then called the comic book store. My town had them. And I started trading online on Amer uh, Prodigy and American Online and stuff. But Iceman is the first one I remember that they was a big hoopla online at the comic book store. And everybody's like, I got to find this X-Man figure. It was hard to find. I remember on the news groups on our net, he was going for about 50 to $75, which was crazy at that time. Now, some of the Batman anime series figures were rare, hard to find, but they weren't rare. They were just selling out pretty fast. They were hitting stores and selling out. Iceman, I believe, was one per case. And he was really, really hard to find. Now, luckily, around this same time, uh, that summer, it was the summer of 90. Well, um, let me go back here. I'm trying to remember exactly here. Okay. Okay, I got to reframe my mind here because I, I read online this was released in 92. So it must have came out at the end of 92 or produced in 92, getting in stores in 93 because I can remember where, where I got this figure and I can remember everything about it. And it had to be 93. I know because I graduated uh, high school in 93. That's right. Before you do the math, graduated at 20 years old, going on 21. Okay, I talked about it before. I failed second grade. I failed ninth grade. And I graduated actually from the 11th for having enough credits, but we won't get into all that. We won't get into all that. <laughs> so that summer, I started working at Toys R Us as a summer job, and I had my uh, part time money. And I can remember I did it opening cases in the back room or going to the action, going, getting the cases out the back, taking them to fill up the X Men section or the Batman section. And that Iceman in that case, it was one per case. And I can remember we'd get maybe two cases in or one case, usually one case. And I can remember seeing that Iceman when I first, well, like my first day or two on the job. I was like, oh my God, Iceman. And they had a policy that if you took any case out the back and took a figure or anything out of that case, not just figure being toy, out of the case, you had to put all the case on the shelf. If all the cases wouldn't, if everything in that case wouldn't fit on the peg or on the shelf, then you have to box it all but take it back to the stock room again. You couldn't have broken cases, they call it, in the back. Uh, so I was like, oh, I can't put these X-Men out. So I took an X-Men off the wall that was normally on the wall, swapped the, X, the Iceman out, and put mine in. I know you people say, oh, there is an employee. That's why we couldn't find an uh, Iceman, because of people like Junkman working at Toys Us. That's true, that's true. We'll get into that a little deeper. But remember, I, I was like, what am I going to do with this Iceman? As I've been looking for, not to resell it, I just wanted it for myself. I love the thing. I always had this thing for clear figures. I always love clear figures. In fact, they got an Iceman now in the Marvel Retro line. I really want it. I see it all the time at Walmart, and I keep putting it off. I'll do that until they don't have it anymore, and then I'll get mad at myself. But this, you take the figure out of the box, you can put them in the freezer, and you can change colors. But anyway, I remember the X-Men row. I put him in the very back of the row. Hopefully, when I get off work. We couldn't buy nothing while we were on the clock, so 
it was rough. So I waited all day. No one, luckily no collectors, no fans came in and dig through the pegs. So I was able to get that Iceman, finally. Uh, I can remember uh, my buddy Russ, you know Russ, so we started hanging out around the same time, you know, and he was asking me, hey, give me an Iceman if you see one. And then other guys from the comic book store and other places were like, I heard you're the hookup for Iceman. I heard you can get us Iceman. I mean, it was kind of like people, hey, man, I got an inside guy towards us. He can get us an Iceman. He can get us whatever we want. And then the shipments of these X-Men figures would come in. I would find myself taking a figure off the peg, switching out with Iceman. And in the back, I would have a whole case of nothing but Iceman. I know, I know. It's wrong now thinking about it. But whenever I was working, if I saw somebody looking through the X-Men stuff like that, I would always say, you looking for Iceman? And I wouldn't charge. I'd be like, I got, I got one in the back. I'll go grab it for you. I can remember a couple of people I didn't even know came in doing that. I can remember uh, a, f a friend of a friend came in. And I was, he was like, man, I was looking for the Iceman. Where is Iceman? I was like, I'll go get you one. I got them back here. Uh, so, looking back, I was like, I should just put them on the shelf. I probably hurt some people's chances of finding it. I mean, it was Toys Us, Johnny, you know, Toys Us, Kmart. And, you know, you really weren't going to find it anywhere else because Toys Us is a place that got so many shipments in. But there I was. I was the hookup for the Iceman. And I don't know, looking back at that figure now, I have such fond memories of that figure. It just sets me back to that time looking at it. Like I said, there's some other fond memory toys of the 90s. I really don't hold a lot of that 90s stuff with... You know, don't get the memory banks running like some of the other figures. Uh, like the figures from the 80s and everything. But this one really does. It reminds me of working at Toys Us. So I only lasted a couple of months before they fired me. I don't know. I guess because I was always hanging around the toy aisle. I mean, they said I was always talking to customers too long or talking to friends. They said I was talking to friends. That's because if I saw anybody looking at the toys and they look like a collector, I would sit over and I'd talk to them for about 20, 15 minutes or something. And they put me on the register. I said, do not put me on the register. I can't count. Don't put me on the register. I'm not doing math in my head, you know. And I would always come up short or over. Most of the time, short. And they would get very upset if my cash register came up short. Now, so I told you not to put me on this thing. And whenever I came up over, like one time I was over $150 over, they didn't care at all. They didn't say nothing about that. Should have gave me the $150 over. But anyway, I only lasted a couple months there. Um, but I just have this fond memory of this X-Men figure. Now, I've talked about this story before, kind of, but I just wanted to bring it up in a newer video just so you guys can look at it. Maybe hear some of your stories. Maybe this time period, this early 90s, maybe you were into the X-Men. Maybe you could never find X-Men because of people like me. And I know I hear it today. Uh, Mo, the employees are hiding us, hiding everything where we can't get them, which I don't think works as much as it did, at least at Toys R Us, because I know Walmart and Target, they don't really keep stuff in the stock room. I mean, of course, an employee could hide something, and I'm sure a lot of them do. Especially now with eBay and everything, you know, they know they can resell it. But now it comes in the truck, it goes out on the floor, and whoever's working that order is going to have to put it up. You know, they order for the shelf now. It's very rare for something to be stock like we did at Toys R Us anyway. Probably later in 93, probably later of the year, they shipped out more of them. They knew he was a popular item, uh, but they changed it. They made him blue. It looked cool. I just didn't like it. I wanted the clear one. So, the clear one's the cool one, if you ask me. But they both look pretty good, but I like the clear one. Uh, anyway, that's my Iceman story. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll talk again soon. Jump that <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>